So once again, um, thanks and welcome to the IEU webinar, the uh, webinar on the independent evaluation of the uh, readiness uh, program, the RPSP program, so readiness and preparatory support program of the GCF. We've undergone quite, um, quite a process, an evaluation process for this independent evaluation. We'll talk about this in a short while. I'm just here to uh, welcome you and um, also speak a little bit about the evaluation team um, to um, introduce this evaluation to you. Um, we have finalized the report. This is basically to show you the conclusions and recommendations, the high level conclusions and recommendations from the report. The report, of course, will come to you, board members and advisors, um, with the um, publication deadline uh, on uh, uh, very, very early October. And until then, we thought it's best if we uh, allow for a bit of space here to discuss the conclusions and recommendations with you, but also hear your feedback um, and any further questions that you may have here um, to us. Um, can I ask for the next slide? On the next slide, let me just quickly introduce the evaluation team. So we were here um, um, joined by our evaluation team and the co-leads Prajant Kuturi, as well as uh, Dr. Anastasia um, Aladi Sheva. We've also joined by our um, evaluation team core members, Yonji Kim, Peter Mandri, Elang uh, Morgano, as well as Josephine uh, Vambui Nagala. Um, we also had next to our IU evaluation team um, support by our consultancy firm Universalia um, under the leadership of e Eric uh, Abitbol. He's also here with us tonight. And um, with that, I, uh, I handed over to the co-leads of the evaluation, so Prajan Kuturi and after that Anastasia Lasheva to uh, introduce the conclusion as well as the recommendations of the evaluation. The evaluation report already um, is, of course, uh, a little longer than that, but we, we are trying to give you a little sneak peek to the report that you will see um, in a, in a short while. And with that, I move it over to Prajant, over to you. Thank you, Andreas, for giving me the floor. Um, I'll take you, uh, this evaluation has seven conclusions and seven recommendations. So I'll be running through the conclusions before handing over the floor to my colleague, Anna here, to run you through the recommendations. So next slide, please. Um, so uh, just to give you a quick flavor of how far we have come, uh, this evaluation has had a rather short timeline uh, but in spite of that, uh, we have uh, delivered multiple deliverables under the uh, rubric of this evaluation. Um, in, in, in B35 in March 2023, we delivered the RPSP synthesis note, which is a summary of uh, all previous evaluations and uh, their assessments and conclusions on the readiness program. Uh, similarly, in B36 in July 2023, we delivered a, a benchmarking study on readiness program and how it is uh, undertaken readiness programs of other institutions are undertaken and where GCF's readiness program sits within that. Uh, in the process of this evaluation, we have uh, used a wide variety of methods. So uh, we have used surveys, uh, we have undertaken country case studies, uh, which involve field missions, country missions to eight countries. We have undertaken data collection and analysis through focus group discussions. And we have also undertaken a theory of change workshop with the secretariat. Um, and uh, this was done jointly with uh, DPM to gain a common understanding of, sorry, of uh, the uh, theory of change of readiness program as seen by Secretariat. Uh, in, in August, 2023, we had a preliminary webinar on preliminary findings uh, to share them uh, the, the findings with the Secretariat. And uh, today we are ha very happy to share with you the conclusions and recommendations of the evaluation. And we'll also be, of course, presenting the same report uh, in, at B37 in October 2023. Next slide, please. So coming to the conclusions, uh, next slide. Uh, uh, of the seven conclusions, let me start with the first one. The first overarching conclusion that we have is that uh, RPSP is, uh, you know, the key uh, GCF program designed to meet climate needs of the recipient countries. 
And GCF being uh, the largest climate finance institution in the international climate finance architecture, readiness uh, does have a role to play uh, within that. However, its value proposition in this architecture uh, within both within GCF and the larger architecture still remains insufficiently developed and, uh, and more importantly, not universally shared. This, this value proposition and a wide variety of stakeholders give uh, different ideas of what is the overarching mandate that readiness should be fulfilling and how it should be it should fit into the uh, programmatic offering of GCS. So that is the first conclusion. Second is that the effectiveness and efficiency of uh, uh, GCS readiness operations are challenged by the known operational constraints of GCS. Uh, just to give you a few examples, um, lack of sufficient staff capacity, insufficient appreciation of context, lack of flexibility in processes, long review times, and lack of integration between, process, uh, between different processes within the secretariat. Um, now, these are not unique to the readiness program themselves, and uh, these constraints are also observed in uh, the funded activity portfolio as well. However, they also do tend to affect the effectiveness and efficiency of the readiness program. Uh, just to give you an example, um, on the right, you will see that uh, the, uh, the time lag between submission and effectiveness of RPSP grants between RPSP 1 and RPSP 2 uh, or 2.0, there is quite a bit of, uh, uh, there, there is some decrease in the, in the processing times at different stages. However, many stakeholders, of course, still find these processing times to be uh, quite long. So this is one of the points that I was discussing. And these are not unique to the readiness program itself but they do affect the performance of the readiness program. Uh, next slide, please. Third is a uh, fragmentation of GCF's internal structure affects the level of integrated engagement with country stakeholders and the degree of continuity in the transition from offerings to downstream initiatives. So um, GCF, the readiness program within GCF straddles uh, a variety of divisions. So a DCP as the origin, so division of country programming as the uh, originating division usually, and which also sees through the approval, and then a wide variety of relevant thematic inputs from DMA and DPSF, the division of portfolio uh, man mitigation and adaptation, and division of uh, private sector uh, operations, and uh, also the Office of Sustainability, which also gives inputs from time to time depending on the need. And then the portfolio, then the grant gets passed on to the division of portfolio management. So there is this uh, fragmentation of uh, over uh, over the readiness over readiness grants life cycle. Uh, now these are this uh, fragmentation has a few uh, consequences. First of all, it leads to a, a, a lack of championship at the overarching level in the secretariat of uh, the readiness program. So there's no one big champion at the senior management level of the readiness program. Uh, second, it has to. There is. Uh, we have noticed in the course of this, evalu this evaluation data discrepancies. So, uh, for example, um, um, the databases produced by one division uh, mention a certain number of concept notes which have been produced as a result of this uh, of the readiness program, but uh, the same figure produced by another division uh, gives another number in terms of uh, you know what is what should be the what are the number of uh, concept notes produced as a result of the readiness program. So there is this uh, data dis discrepancy which comes in. Uh, lastly, there is a lack of linkage between deliverables, different deliverables. So for example, a concept note which gets um, produced as a result of readiness comes to DPM, but the, the responsibility for taking it through the funding proposal stage lies either with the division of management mitigation adaptation or the private sector division. So uh, there is this, because of this fragmentation, uh, there is this lack, this discontinuity between the different deliverables in the sec in the, within the sec secretariat and lack of linkage between upstream uh, outputs and the downstream benefits of uh, readiness program materializing. Um, the fourth has to do with the fact that success at the country level depends on contextual factors which are not fully uh, acknowledged and addressed. So, um, Overall, within GCF, there is an insufficient understanding of the contextual factors um, uh, within countries and vice versa. Even within countries, there's an insufficient understanding of what GCF requires. Countries face a variety of challenges. So uh, they also face, similar to GCF, they face challenges around lack of, say, NDA capacity, turnover uh, within the NDA, um, change in the, uh, in the policy environment. So these are all challenges that uh, countries face. Now, readiness program doesn't always account for the specificities of the country. 
and uh, what this this is another way of saying that country readiness needs are not always very well understood so that end um, grant gcf usually takes more of a grant by grant view rather than a whole country view of the readiness operations so that is on the fourth conclusion next slide please uh, the fifth slide can, pertains to lack of key uh, clarity around key concepts in readiness theory of change, uh, RPSP theory of change. So, for example, uh, paradigm shift is uh, we have noticed that uh, it is in countries which have the bet a better understanding of what their idea of paradigm shift is or what paradigm shift do they want to bring about at the country level. The countries which have that clarity are the ones which have seen the most potential when it comes to bringing about a paradigm shift. Um, now, uh, this lack of clarity uh, within the um, within the RPSP program at the country level on what these concepts mean to them uh, is a hindrance in terms of uh, what can be achieved uh, through the readiness program. Now, the sixth conclusion pertains to the RRMF, the Readiness Results Measurement Framework. Now, this framework was introduced in February 2022 and provides a framework for measuring results. However, um, uh, we see uh, two challenges when it comes to uh, this framework. Uh, while in theory, it is a good framework, uh, currently GCF does not have any periodic, uh, you know, any uh, regular means of assessing uh, outcome and impact level results. Uh, we are cognizant of a certain output mapping exercise which has been undertaken by the Secretariat, but even there we are unsure of the uh, continuing the periodicity of that exercise. So that is the first challenge. Second has to do with the uh, with the, uh, uh, a lack of means within the Secretariat to look at the quality of implementation. So let me draw your attention to the table on the right that you see on the screen. Um, uh, this is um, this has been drawn from uh, uh, the database that uh, IEU uh, uh, created, mapping the outputs which have been undertaken by. Uh, outputs which have been created as a result of the readiness program. So this is from objective one. Uh, you see that we have put down the achievement rate. However, uh, we have no way of, uh, and these are drawn from the grant completion reports, but we have no way of verifying what is the quality of the output or the quality of implementation of the said grant. So uh, in the absence of that, uh, we are also unable to see the emerging risks which come out at the stage of uh, readiness implementation. Lastly, there is little harmonization and coherence between RPSP strategies, tools, and tools for their or strategy and the tools for their operationalization. Just to give you an example, in 2019, uh, it was in 2019 that the readiness strategy was approved, and uh, in that uh, time period, since then, um, March 2020 was when the new uh, uh, handbook for readiness handbook was released, um, and only in February 2022, GCF came up with the RRMF. Uh, and then uh, in, in again in March 2023, GCF came up with a new uh, readiness guidebook, which also contains a review standards a guidebook as an annex, which guides reviewers of readiness proposals on what to look out for uh, in, in terms of in readiness proposals. So uh, in the course of uh, this assessment, one thing that uh, we have noticed is that this extended operationalization has two consequences uh, for the readiness program. One, is that uh, there is a constant sense of change in the readiness program. So uh, different stakeholders have to keep adapting to the new tools that keep coming up throughout the, uh, the time frame of the readiness strategy. That is one. Second uh, is the fact that each time such a change is introduced or a new tool is introduced, certain amount of retrofitting is required. So we see that as true for RRMF, for example, and this has caused, um, this has extracted quite a bit of uh, uh, the, uh, quite, this has, been quite burdensome for certain stakeholders of readiness program. So um, this is so this is the last conclusion that we want to just share with you. At this point, I'll hand over the floor to my colleague Anna to go through the recommendations with you. Over to you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prashant. Uh, I, I hope you can hear me well. Um, and uh, thank you very much, Andres, for this introduction. And good evening from Songdo. Uh, so I'll cover the seven key recommendations that flow uh, from uh, the conclusions that Prashant just currently uh, introduced. I might be repeating a few things from the conclusions, but this is to inform uh, the, the recommendations. And these recommendations are to inform the, the direction of the program, taking, of course, into account the 
uh, challenges and capacities of GTF eligible countries and stakeholders. So for the first recommendation, we emphasize that uh, GCF should have a strategic intent and orientation for RPSP. And also GCF should rationalize its capacity to resource the readiness program. So what it means is that first of all, GCF should cl clarify the value proposition and business case of RPSP. Its role needs to be aligned with strategic directions and modalities of the fund, such as uh, project preparation facility, private sector facility accreditation, so on. RPSP should be more clear about its, what, what its goals are and what it's trying to achieve, and revisit the questions that we asked back in 2018 in our IEU evaluation. Readiness for what, for whom, and by when? They are not fully answered by the program or the strategy. GCF should also provide formal strategic program leadership. Uh, as Prashant mentioned, the program sits on multiple uh, chairs um, or spans across multiple divisions, such as DCP that work with countries and country programs and DPM that work with uh, communicate with delivery partners. It makes the program ambiguous in its purpose and priorities. So Prashant talked about the fragmentation and that RPSP needs championship at the senior management level to put pieces of a puzzle together, make it more coherent, and provides the strategic perspective. Uh, finally, uh, GCF should account for its capacity to resource the readiness. So in fact, demands on the program exceed the resources available at the Secretariat to address them in a timely way. This ends up in delays in the revisions, approvals, legal agreements, disbursement, and so on. So this collaboration between the program growth, its resources and capacity should be also considered. The second recommendation is that RPSP should adopt a country-centered approach to its operations. So what it means is that uh, GCF should develop a country-specific approach to understanding what paradigm shift is. It should integrate country context into the RPSP operations. It uh, needs to better understand the country-level climate finance needs and readiness needs. And as it was informed by the conclusions, it should move away from a grant by grant or delivery partner centric view of readiness to a more of a portfolio view and country level view of readiness. So as we know, there are existing platforms for communication and learning such as regional structural dialogues um, or some, if, if they are not uh, effective enough, uh, alternative models could be considered a bit more such as one and -on one country visits. So that's first. Secondly, GCF should update guidance and reinforce support for country coordination mechanisms. While some countries do very well in this respect, others are lagging behind. This relates to considerations for locations within government administration, NDA leadership, composition and capacity requirements, mechanisms for stakeholder participation, and other aspects. And finally, for the second recommendation, uh, GCF should consider the in interplay between its different objectives and differentiated country needs. So what it means is RPSP should not operate in a linear fashion. So it doesn't go from objective one, which is a capacity building objective, towards objective two on uh, country ownership, towards objective three on adaptation planning, four on pipeline development, and five on knowledge management at, in a linear way. At the very end, it could be more flexible and dynamic instrument that is responsive to country needs. For recommendation three, uh, when socializing RPSP, GCF should be more intentional and targeted in communicating what it offers and enable this learning. Uh, we know that based on our findings, country level stakeholders do not share a common understanding of readiness and what it offers. So the RPSP guidebook contains valuable information, it's translated in different languages, but it needs to be complemented with how to use it effectively. More clarity should be provided about existence of different modalities. So for example, existence of one year versus multi-year grants. Private sector has indicated that they lack information and awareness on how to engage with readiness program. So with this, GCF should curate value proposition of RPSP to different categories of stakeholders, and tailor communication through 
uh, dedicated channels. And uh, also, GCF should continue uh, integrating and operationalizing tools for knowledge management, such as the Redness Knowledge Bank that's been introduced recently. Recommendation four, GCF should invest in making stronger the newly created Readiness Results Management Framework, RMF, as a learning and accountability tool. So RMF fills the gap to understand RPSP's, RPSP's contribution a bit better than before when it didn't exist, but it's very output focused. And GCF should develop additional mechanisms to periodically measure outcomes and impacts of RPSP. Uh, as Prashan also mentioned about quality, GCF should also develop mechanisms to enable rigorous and periodic assessment of quality of RPSP implementation, brand implementation, and not only whether certain outputs were achieved or not, as it currently is in RMF. For recommendation five, GCF should operationalize the new RPSP strategy in a time-bound and timely manner. What it means is that the new tools, frameworks, standing operating procedures should be introduced sequentially on time in harmony with the new strategy and within a certain time frame. This will increase transparency and understanding among different stakeholders, but it was, will also minimize the perception of a constant change in the program that is currently there. And now moving on to the last two recommendations, Recommendation six on sustainability and recommendation seven on vulnerable groups. So for recommendation six, uh, to enhance sustainability of RPSP results, GCF should reach diverse actors and cultivate national climate finance ecosystems. So GCF should continue to invest in strengthening the NDAs and direct access entities, but it should be more intentionally, there should be more intentional support to the private sector, civil society, academia, climate experts, uh, local climate experts to use the expertise for climate action. This may, this may simulate the development of um, the development of generations of climate experts and the development of climate finance culture, so to speak, and contribute to the sustainability of results. And uh, finally, for recommendation seven, GCF should increase the overall accessibility and cost effectiveness of RPSP in particular for vulnerable countries, and adjust its strategic orientation, progress, uh, processes, sorry, and mechanisms specifically for this vulnerable group. It's, we know that it's challenging for the most vulnerable countries to engage with RPSP based on our data findings, our interviews, uh, so on. Some adjustments to RPSP processes and mechanisms need to be tailored to that vulnerable group so that RPSP can provide a better coverage, and cost effectiveness. So for example, these changes could be related to speeding up RPSP grant review and approval or providing greater flexibility in implementation, depending on the conditions on the ground, of course. So thank you very much. Uh, this is all from my end and I'm giving myself back to Andres. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, please reach out, stay in contact. We're really, really ready to, to speak to you anytime uh, you see fit. And then obviously uh, we're very much looking forward to Georgia uh, and to seeing you all there. Uh, thank you, Nino, as well on that one. Thanks, colleagues. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>